Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2015 Land Rover Evoque, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Draw Tight Class 3 2 inch Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver. Now, many of our Evoque customers plan on using their SUV for a little bit of everything. And since our hitch is a Class 3 and has a 2 inch by 2 inch opening, you're going to be able to use this for just about any accessory available. And that includes your bike racks and cargo carriers. And it's also going to work really well for towing since it has some pretty impressive weight capacities. And if you're like our customer here who had an original factory inch and a quarter hitch installed, this is going to be a major improvement because it's so much more versatile. We're going to have a reinforced collar at the end of our receiver tube for extra strength. We're also going to have the standard size 5A pen hole. Now keep in mind a pen and clip does not come included, but if you need one you can find it here at eTrailer. We're also going to have loop style safety chain openings, which are going to be open enough and large enough to use just about any size hook we might have. Our hitch is also going to have a smaller hole in front of our pen hole, and that's going to allow us to use a J pen. Now what this does is take out any of that rattle or play in our connection point whenever we have an accessory or a ball mount installed. Now one of the things I really like about this hitch is that it's going to give us some good clearance. And what I mean by that is the end of our receiver tube is going to sit just right behind our bumper and not tucked very far back. And that's going to work really well for those folding accessories like a bike rack. And that's usually not the case with hitches that have a hidden cross tube like ours here. Now as far as our hitches weight capacities go, it's going to have a 675 maximum gross tongue weight rating. That's going to be the amount of weight pushing down on our hitch. So that's going to work perfect for just about any size or style of bike rack. Now when it comes to the maximum gross trailer weight rating, that's going to be 4,500 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight pulling on your hitch. So however much your trailer weighs, plus anything you might have on it. Now it is always a good idea to check with your owner's manual to make sure your car can pull that much weight. Now just one thing I do want to point out, is since our customer did previously have a factory hitch installed, the fascia here was trimmed out to this size. Now with this hitch in place, you're not going to have to make an opening this large. Typically, you just need to cut off the last bottom portion, just enough for our hitch to clear. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements, and you're going to use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 12 and a half inches. So chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be about five inches. And you're going to use that to help figure out if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in the upright position without making contact with our bumper. Now, if you plan on doing a little bit of towing, I'd recommend looking into some trailer wiring. And if your trailer has electric brakes and you're needing a nice brake controller, I'd recommend the Takancha P3. Other than that, some of our customers had a little bit of trouble during the installation, but it's really not that bad. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put our hitch on together now. Let's begin our installation. We're first going to start by removing a heat shield right here behind our muffler. Our heat shield is going to be held in place by four fasteners down here along the bottom edge, four in the middle, and four more up top. Now they're either going to be 10 millimeter bolts or a T30 Torx bit. Now something I do want to point out, your heat shield may look a little bit different. In this case, our customer actually had a factory hitch option that was on the vehicle here, which he decided to remove and go with this style of hitch. But either way, the heat shield is going to be removed the same way, regardless if you have that factory hitch option or not. All of the fastener is removed, we can then pull down on our shield, work it out underneath the car, and set it off to the side for now. Now we're going to need to lower our exhaust, but before we do that, it's a good idea to use a strap 
We'll run it from side to side. That way when we do lower the exhaust, it doesn't come falling down and we can control the speed on how fast we let it down. To lower our exhaust, we're going to have to remove three rubber isolator hangers. We're going to have two over here on the passenger side, one here and one here. And to get those off, what you're gonna do is spray them down with some penetrating oil or even some soapy water. You get a pry bar and just work that hanger off of our exhaust. And over on the driver's side, we're going to have one more rubber isolator hanger. And I'll use that same pry bar method to get it removed. With all three of our hangers removed, we can now loosen up our strap to lower the exhaust some to give us some more room to work. Now over here on the driver's side frame rail, we're going to need to put our hardware in into this large hole here. Now to get hardware into that opening, we're going to be using the reverse fish wire technique. So we'll take the coiled end of our fish wire, and we're going to slide on our spacer block, and we're gonna take our carriage bolt and thread that into the coils. And what we can do is push that bolt into the frame, as well as our spacer block, and then jiggle it around, and get that bolt to drop out like that. At this point, what you could do is use a pair of 10 snips to trim your heat shield according to the diagram in our instructions. Uh, keep in mind, ours has already been done because our customer previously had that factory hitch installed. Now once your heat shield is trimmed, you would trim out your fascia here along the bottom according to the diagram and the instructions. Now once your fascia is trimmed as well as your heat shield, at this point we can go ahead and reinstall our heat shield. Now before we put our hitch into place, I'd like to go over our attachment points as well as the hardware that we're going to be using for them. Over here on the passenger side, we're going to have three attachment points. One here, here, and here. And they're all going to use the same hardware. We're going to take our bolt, followed by a split lock washer, followed by a flat washer. Once our hitch is in place, we'll use all that hardware to thread it in and secure it. Over on the driver's side, we're going to have two attachment points. We're going to be using our carriage bolt here, and once the hitch is in place over that, we're going to secure it using a conical tooth washer. You want to make sure that the teeth on these conical tooth washers are always going to face up towards the hitch. And then we're going to follow that up with a nut. Now the other hole that we're going to be using is this one right here. And the hardware that we're going to use is this large bolt as well as a conical tooth washer. Once again, you want the teeth to face up towards the hitch. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna take our hitch and put it in place. Make sure to take your fish wire and put it through that corresponding hole in the hitch. Now feed it back behind our bumper. Once we have our hitch lifted up in place, and remove that fish wire. Now you're going to want to get at least one fastener secured on each side. That way the hitch will support itself while you work on the rest of the bolts. Now 
now with all of our hardware in place and hand tight, we can snug it all down. Now using a torque wrench, we can tighten everything down to the specification found in our instructions. With our hitch completely torqued down, now we can re-raise our exhaust the same way that we lowered it. And that'll do it for our look at and our installation of the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver on our 2015 Land Rover Evoque.